Now, our job in Rumi Key Wizard is temporarily finished. Okay, so what I need to do now is jump over to Rephase. All right, now I have two copies of it here. This one's going to be for the left channel, and this one is going to be for the right channel. So let's start on the left. You can go to Import Measurement here, or you can come over to Measurement, Import from File here. Uh, either way, we'll do the same thing. It's going to get you to this screen where we select our folder, and we're looking for the excess phase file that we just saved, all right? So since I'm working on the left speaker, I'm going to go ahead and grab excess phase MP left, open. All right, so that opens up. Uh, my range is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, okay? Uh, my number of taps is 65536. Keep the rest of this the same. Change this to Blackman Harris. Change the rate to 96K. Change the format to 64 bits IEEE -E -E mono wave file, and then change the name to whatever you want. I'm simply going to call mine. Um, uh, tutorial uh, correction. I'll just put COR for correction. And I'm going to call this left because this is my left filter. Now here, this is the folder that we're going to save it to. So I need to go to my Let's see, uh, Rumi Q Wizard, yes. Tutorial 3, yes. Uh, I'll just put this in the main directory. It doesn't make any difference. And here, come over to Paragraphic Gain EQ. Go to Tools. Go to Import REW Filter Settings. All right, again, we have to get to the right folder. Tutorial 3, Magnitude Banks, okay? Magnitude left, bank one, open. Okay, now I'm on bank one over here, and I just loaded bank one, which corresponds. Okay, so the next thing I need to do, well, I don't need to do this, but I like to do it because it makes sense to me, organize by ascending frequency. And what that does is it puts them in order here in terms of frequency uh, in, a, in a way that matches the view I'm looking at up here. For some reason, when you import the bank, it's backwards with the high frequencies over here and the low ones over here, which is just, I don't know why, but it doesn't make any sense. It makes more sense to me to organize them from left to right as they are up here visually. Okay, now switch this over to bank two. We get a brand new bank of filters. Go to tools, Import REW filter settings, load magnitude left bank two this time. Open. Now you can see that they're in order from, they're backwards, right? So what I want to do is go to order by ascending frequency, puts them in the right order. These ones down here just aren't being used. Uh, that's totally fine, okay? Uh, so this technically is our left filter. Okay, these settings right here. So I've got the two filter banks loaded, um, and I can see them here by switching back and forth between these two banks. All right, so bank one and bank two are loaded. The impulse settings are set. This is what you want to do. These names and this path are going to be individual to you. And my range, 20 to 20K. And the measurement file I have loaded is my left excess phase that I exported from Rumi Q Wizard. Okay, so hit generate right here. Give it a second to calculate that. And we have our left filter. So go ahead and go to file, save settings as. Now this directory uh, will automatically be whatever you put here. So all I have to do is hit save. All right, now I'm going over to the right and I'm going to basically do the same thing. So this time I'll do it this way. Let's go to excess phase. 
upload the right one this time because I'm working on the right speaker. So that puts it over here, just like before. Range 20 to 20,000. Taps 65536. And the windowing is going to be Blackman Harris. This is going to be 96,000. This is going to be 64 bit mono wave file. So I'm literally just going to copy this out of the other file, come back over here and paste it in there, changing this. Oh, looks like I got to get rid of that. Changing this to right. And then set the path. So again, I have to go, I have to find my flash drive. I have to put this in here, in here. And I think that's what I did, just the root directory. All right, next thing to do is the paragraphic gain EQ. So bank one, import REW filter settings, magnitude banks, and then I want right bank one and organize by ascending frequency bank two, load settings, bank two, open, and then order by ascending frequency. Okay, so here's our second filter. We've got our two banks loaded, we've got our impulse settings input, and we have our excess phase measurement. So click generate. All right, so this gives us the right speaker filter, and I'm going to save these settings. Now, leave this alone for now. Go back to REW, go to File, Import, Impulse Response, just like this. Okay, go to the uh, location of your filters. And I'm going to load in the left filter. I just saved these out of reface. I'm going to load the right filter. So import impulse response, grab the right one, open it. Okay, so now I have this again. Let me uh, color code these. We can't have them backwards now, can we? Now, go to trace arithmetic. Okay, load magnitude left as A, and then the left filter as B. Change this to multiplication. Click generate. We get a new measurement down here called A times B. I'm going to change this to filtered left. This is a literal preview of the filter because I'm taking the filter data and I'm multiplying it by the original response, and it gives me the corrected preview, uh, the filtered preview. So I could also call this uh, filtered left preview. It's basically as descriptive as it gets. Come over here, select magnitude R, select the right filter, multiply, generate. So I'll just take this and change, change this to right and give it some blue color. All right, now let me get these windows out of the way and we'll take a look at what we've got. Okay, let me go ahead and clear my selections because it's getting a little messy. So let me center this thing back around 75 make sure they're visible. Go to controls, measurement actions, and an SPL offset. We'll start with minus 100. We need to bring it down 100 dBs because it is technically way up there at the top, it's way too high for us to be able to see it. So we just need to bring it down so we can see it. 
So I'll bring it down to about here. I don't know, let's take a look at the other side. Uh, 75 is roughly where I want it to be balanced at. So we'll bring it down to about here. Let's say uh, 107.5, okay? Add this offset to the data. This one, same deal, minus 107.5. Add an offset to data, and you can close this window. All right, so now what I'm looking at is a final preview of my frequency response. Now, if I go to overlays, clear selections, and select my filter previews, what I see is a nearly perfect, this would be a mathematical preview, of my step response. These line up beautifully. Let me take a look at my group delay. It's a little scary at first, but that's only because I have so many different measurements open. So let's clear them all and look at my two filtered previews. Now this is about, this is about as good as it's going to get. You can't really, at least I haven't been able to, get it any closer than this. Now this is actually extremely good. When you listen to this, you're, you're going to be listening to some really clear, really pure sound. There's just one more thing we need to do. Currently, these filters exist independently as left and right, okay? What we need to do is go to File, Export. Export Impulse Response as Wave. Okay, you'll get this window. Leave that at 32-bit float, change this to stereo. For the left channel, load the left filter. For the right channel, make sure that the right filter is loaded, okay? So you should have left and right, pretty simple. This, you can leave it the way it is, or you can switch it to export min phase version. I encourage you to do both of these, compare them and figure out which one you like the best. Uh, my personal preference tends to be this, even though this does change the phase again, uh, it, it, but Again, your, your, your ears need to take over at this point. Okay, let's uh, leave this at 48K. Or if you have a higher sample rate that you're running, you can, you can also export uh, 96. But uh, my system here is using 48, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. Say OK. Um, then all I have to do is go back and find my... Uh, let's just do it this way. Find my, my flash drive. Go back to my tutorial. Here I'll make one more folder. All right, and I will go ahead and save my filter in here. Now this, this mess, this name basically includes both filters. So it's tutorial uh, correction 96 left, tutorial correction 96 right. What I'm gonna do is just take half of this off so the name's not so long. And all I'll do is change this to stereo. All right. So what this is going to do is give me a single stereo filter that contains the left correction data in the left channel and the right correction data in the right channel. Okay, and that's it. The only thing I have to do now is load the filter into a convolution application that can be used to filter my audio.